congrats on a great performance tonight. Great victory. Talk to me about the toughness of your opponent first. You know, that was a great fight. You had to dig deep for that one. Uh, what do you have to say about the opponent? Thank you, man. Yeah, that guy was tough. Um, I haven't fought in over a year. I, I had a I had a big I had a little surgery, and uh, I had to take some time off. And dude, they hit me up, and they're like, I, I, I literally I haven't even been wrestling. This was in like December. Haven't done shit. I'll still rehab him this surgery. And they're like, hey, you want to fight this undefeated Dagestani guy? And I, for a split second, I was like, dude, let me fight up. Let me maybe fight a stand-up guy, this and that. And then just, just, the thought of, just the thought of that, I had to walk to the mirror and call my reflection a little bitch. And then I hit up my manager. I was like, fuck it. Let's get this guy, you know? And no wrestling or nothing. And I just, you know, went in there and fucking hit up my, hit up my team. And they got me ready for this guy. You looked real good on the feet tonight. How did you feel up there? Um, was was keeping the fight on the feet for most of the fight? Was that the game plan? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I didn't think he was gonna stand with me that much, but my takedown defense uh, it held up pretty well. You know, I, I fought for positioning, and uh, he he didn't he didn't make it easy for me, man. I was I was out there working. One hundred percent. And. Uh, a great victory like this, obviously, it sounds like it wasn't exactly the fight that you that you envisioned being the kind of your return fight after your surgery. Um, but I do have to say, you look great tonight, man, and I'm Appreciate sure you're pretty it, pretty happy with your performance yourself. Uh, what's next for you? You know, how do you feel after this, and where do you want to go next? Yeah, it's three, that's three straight now, you know, and uh, I need to get to crack that top ten, start making some real money. Awesome, thank you. Right here. Back here. Where? Oh, what up? <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha. So, when it went to decision, did you think that you had to fight? Well, I don't know if you guys have been watching these fights, but I've been watching them backstage, and a couple of these motherfuckers got robbed. I was like, damn, there's, these judges are fucking shit tonight. So, I was like, whatever. And I've been on some bad ends of some decisions, so I was just, you know, when it goes to decision, it's, it's whatever. So. so, did the fight uh, go down the way you envisioned it? Yeah, yeah. What I envisioned was just me putting forth best efforts and, you know, fighting, fighting my heart out for these takedowns and uh, just let the, sh let the training show, man. My team put in work for me. Like I was saying, dude, I, I, uh, I had no training before camp. I just went straight, off the, straight from the rehab center to the fucking, uh, to my fight camp. And so it's tough for me, but it was tougher for them having to work, work around all that shit. You know, and put put together like specialized drilling for me for such a tough opponent. And you know, these guys were watching film, and you know, so I, I just got to thank everybody at Fight Ready. You know, Dr. Austin Schoen, Saint Timo DeFranco, Ramon Salazar, of course, Master Ready Shaw, the owner Dave at Fight Ready. Man, these guys, these guys, uh, yeah, these guys, these guys went went all in with me. So can't, can't thank them enough. So so. Looking back on the fight, what do you think that you could have done better or differently? I could have sat on my punches more, and uh, you know, just and just try to uh, just try to line heavier shots. But you know, I kind of felt like I was kind of like just slapping out there. But he he was in a, he was in. He, I just felt like he was gonna lock me up at, like every time. So I just kind of was just trying to play it safe and circle and fucking touch him up. Kay Williams for Can Chronicles Media. Congratulations on the win tonight. Thank you. Even though you walked away with the victory, what are some of the things that you feel that you need to do to continue to catapult your fight game? Yeah, like I was just saying right now, I think I need to sit down on my punches more, you know, and uh, throw a little bit more meaner intentions. Henry right here in front. Um, you just mentioned that you're on a win streak three fights in a row, first time since, I believe, like 2019, that, that time period. After all these years, I guess, how do you, uh, like, what changed? What, what, what do you feel like you were able to do to kind of get this more consistency in your game? Uh, nothing changed, man. I just really like fighting. Yeah, I love fighting. I love training. But more than anything, dude, uh, I love my team, you know. After this, uh, after this year layoff, you know, I took, a, I took a couple steps backwards in my personal life and, uh, my team was there to fucking push me forward and and keep the ball rolling forward in my career, pick me up and 
Uh, yeah, I can't thank them enough. And you've been in Bellator. You're coming up on your eight-year anniversary. Dude, that, been was a my, lot of, that was my 15 or 16 fight. There's been a lot of turnover since you made your debut yeah. here. So I guess uh, would you attribute your just your passion for the sport? Do you think that's what's caught, like been allowed you to be able to do this for so long at the high level? It's a little bit of that. And I, fuck, I don't got anything else going on in my life, dude. You know, I mean, fighting. I just love fighting it over everything. You know, it's what I love. To, it's what I love to do, man. Right back here. How's it going? MMA locker room here, part of Pub Sports Radio. Great fight out there. How is it? How is it to hear the whole crowd screaming your name as round three started to begin? Fuck. Yeah, it felt good. It felt good. Not not just that, dude. I could like distinctly recognize some of these voices. Dude, the, the homie Benson Henderson and his wife were sitting cage side. I, he's one of my old training partners. I could hear fucking. Call, he was like in my fucking corner. I was like, damn, dude. That that was really really cool. And uh, it's, I fought, I'm on the prelim, so there's not that many people in the crowd. So I could fuck and I could hear my homies in the crowd, like, sharp. It was pretty cool. And what about this? I mean, you were the biggest underdog on the card at that. Well, I, well, I mean, what, dude, nobody fucking told me how, how much. He was under- a six to one favorite Damn. on there. So, uh, I should have put some money on me, dude. I bet you, I bet you my coach did. I'm not going to say which one. <laughs> I'm not going to say which one. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, just 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 to just to just to follow that up. You f- you already fought the who's who's in the business. So I mean, what's next? I hear you want to get into that top ten. Currently riding a three fight win streak. You got any names on the short list? No, man. I'm just trying to get paid. You know, it's like 16 fight. Dude, they fucking hit me up. I'm like, damn, these motherfuckers are trying to set me up, dude. This guy's ten and no fucking daggy wrestler. I was like, oh, I see what they're trying to do, and I fucking hit up my homies like, let's ride on it. We'll ride on any of these motherfuckers. You know what I mean? And I didn't turn down no fights. You know, let's let's fucking let's get paid. You know, I'll fight any of these guys. Thanks. Uh, hey, Henry, we, we're used to seeing you just coming out and, and just blasting right away. It seemed like it took you a second to, to get started. Forgive me if you've gone over this already, but did you feel it was a bit of a slow start for you? Yeah, I was, I was um, you know, I'm fighting a fucking guy with a chin strap beard, you know, like, he's, I know what he's going to do. This guy's going to fucking grab me and just hold me, dude. And so I had to be very selective with my punches. And, was, you know, I was tentative and, you know, I got to do better, I guess, but... I did, I, I did what I could, man. And what's the uh, post-fight celebration going to be tonight for you? Dude, I just want to see, I just want to see my friends, you know. I, I grew up to like 20 miles from here, and uh, I moved out to AZ some years back, and there's a bunch of family and friends in the crowd, and uh, I want to eat some fucking tacos and hang out with them. What's up, Henry? Back here. You spoke a little bit about it, but these three guys, Eddie Cha, Roman Salazar, Santino DeFranco. Dr. Austin's show and he's not here. Dr. Yeah. Austin, what do these guys mean to you? How important is it in this game to have a good team around you? And do you feel like going to fight ready was one of the best decisions you ever made in your dude, mixed martial arts career? Yeah. It's, dude, it's so humbling to have people that you really care about and who like speak the truth with you. They'll let you know when you're being a little bitch and they'll let you know when you should think more highly of yourself. And so, you know they do a good they do a good job of keeping me honest and humble and uh, I love them. Thank you, man. Hell yeah.